As a layman, as an artist, what I've learned is that imagination is something whatever you visualize and you implement in it, it in your uh, real life and putting it into a product or a structure or an idea into creativity. So when I talk about me as a layman, as an artist, so so yeah. So initial years when I talk about that, um, for me, I call myself an accidental artist. And why do I say that? Because when I came in the industry, we are three generations into art. My father is also an artist, so is my grandfather. But what I faced at a later stage, and since I was seven years old, all, all I learned was art and that too folk art. And uh, the generation which is my age, we grew with a surrounding of, you know, seeing a lot of these traditional art forms everywhere. And that's what we grew up with. The heritage is our city, our state, Rajasthan, our India. We are very rich in culture, art and culture. And in 2001, when I kind of realized that, you know, I have to, you know, do something of my own, I was 17 years old. So I never want to become an artist because I've seen my father striving, uh, been traveling all our lives. And he was, you know, most of the times he was traveling for work, for art, uh, for, for painting. So I decided to become an exporter. So in 2001, when I opened my company, uh, I, I went to uh, a college in Pune, uh, Symbiosis, did my foreign trade export management. And uh, from there, when I came back, I started my own company, started exporting, thinking that, you know, it was a very fascinating career. I thought uh, it's, a, it's a career that, you know, it'll be, you'll be traveling places all around the world, and uh, it'll be giving you that exposure. Uh, and as I knew art and craft, so I started my own handicraft firm and just began the journey. So since 2008, I was uh, doing, it was trial and error. Sometimes, uh, you know, it used to be profitable. And once in a year, there was this time that, you know, one of your containers failed and, you know, everything came back to, you know, ground zero. So like I say, destiny has its own plans. And uh, till 2009, I was simultaneously into the stock market also. So I used to uh, trade a lot of stocks. And then in 2008, uh, January 22nd, this major stock market crash came. And uh, it was all of a sudden it was a steep decline. And I was the one, like any other you know, person in the country, born major, major losses. And I was 25 years old, uh, married. Um, and I was like uh, left with no grounds, what to do? Then I kind of uh, realized one thing I've done with myself is that I am somebody who's an extreme optimist. Why do I say that? That I am not somebody who sulks in a, at a situation and, you know, would cry about it or pester about it, ki kya hua, kaise hua. I'm somebody who just, you know, I take my time absorbing the situation and I say, what next? Then, in all the midst of all the disappointment around me and my surroundings, I was to, you know, um, down for that moment, but uh, I went to Bombay and I was like, what to do next? Like, you know, export isn't doing great for me. So I went to Bombay, started exploring ideas and my base, my crux was art. That's what I have been doing all my life. Since I was seven years old, I was very famous in the school of my pencil sketching, my, you know, the uh, pencil sketches of my teachers. In the play, play period, I used to sit in the class and I used to paint pencil charcoal sketches for my teachers. And uh, we used to do, uh, we used to make our pigments by self. I used to sit with my father and we used to blend our own colors from vegetables, maybe palak, like spinach and lime. So that's what was my, was my core was. That's what I was best at. Went to Bombay, accidentally, uh, I, a friend of mine told me that, Suvigya, as you're not doing any, anything much right now, why don't you paint a port portrait of this gentleman as he just lost his wife uh, recently, just two months back. And uh, I was like, uh, okay, I definitely will try to, but I'm not in the practice of doing it. But I think from since school, you were the best at this. So just give it a trial. So 
then I, this was the lady, and this was the portrait nun. I took kind of a month to paint it. And uh, this lady demised two months back. I painted this portrait, delivered to him a month later. Took a month to paint this portrait. And the first uh, best appreciation all my life that day, so it was him, it was his son, and it was his wife. They three were sitting, I delivered the portrait to them, and I said, sir, I hope you like it. And all the three were teary-eyed. So they had tears in their eyes, and you like it? Bule, it is as if she's sitting live in front of us. So that was the feeling. I said, thank you so much, sir. Then the second thing is that, uh, how much, uh, so they give her, her, her son asks, how much would you charge for this? So I told him an next price. So he was like, that's it? Like, yes, sir, is that much? He was like, if you even have, would have asked, asked a lakh for it, we would have paid you a lakh for the kind of, uh, the soul what you've put in the, in the painting. And that is the beginning of my career that, and I went on from that place, I came out. I have such a happy feeling that um, you do something and it was appreciated so well, we felt so well by the family. And I was like, okay, I'm still good at it. I can, I can still manage painting on my own and earn a living. Then it was like, uh, there was one more challenge I strongly faced. And as we are talking about innovation beyond imagination, I believe that the time I came in the industry was my bad luck. Why I say this is that uh, my father, we grew up with a lot of folk art around. I say our country is very, very rich in art. When I started my career as an artist in 2001, 2008 when I actually decided to paint and earn my living. Everything was European culture and you know, the trends are changing, no more of those jarokhas and no more of those traditional houses. So that was like the survival, what I felt, what do I do now? So at that time I tried innovating. So when you see this, these are original tanjors. And the one you see next, so there's a later term I called it, they're called refined tanjors. Why I call them refined is in terms of detail, intricacy, and I'm a miniature painting artist, so I master hyper detail. So according to me, I felt there's a lot of glitch in the anatomy which can be rectified, the gold which can be, you know, the embossing can be better, the facial features, the anatomy is the most important in any artwork. As I, like, as we are, you know, we do more of figuratives and it's miniature. Then I worked on these things a lot. So tanjors became refined tanjors, and later in a span of uh, three, four years, they got recognized like that. This was my first copyright. And why I did this? Because I had some glitches that I paint, painted this painting for a family in Bombay, a very prominent family. And uh, while I did this painting for, her, uh, for, the, for the family, so there was this intern uh, following, you know, uh, who was assisting the, the interior designer. So after a year or so, uh, in around 2012-13, when I was kind of already, you know, established as an artist, doing decent work. Um, so I come, I go to a client's place and I see that uh, this is, copywriting is something which is very important. So in this, copywriting will matter because uh, what actually happens is that, uh, and what, so I, yeah, let me continue the same thing, that what happened that when I went to this client's place, so at the entrance I see exactly the same work on the main entrance. And it was not done by me. So I was waiting for the client. She came. So the first thing I asked her is, ma'am, uh, this painting, uh, who did it? It was just my uh, interior designer. So it was a very high resolution print of my same work. But from five feet away, you cannot make out that this is actually the original work or not. And uh, the dumb fellow also forgot to remove my signature from it. <laughs> So I told her, ma'am, this is one of my works. And uh, she told her, oh, I never knew that. So then I was like, you put in so much of an effort of creating an artwork to make it real, to make it look authentic as a product. You have worked so hard to make it like a product of its own, which is an original, that you look forward to a future with it. So so is with art as well. So then I called this guy, explained it to him. Otherwise. With a copyright, if you don't have a copyright for at least some, something which is original, it'll take off, it'll wipe off all the effort what you've made all these years into a, into a dumb waste. 
there'll be no no value out of it so always anyone into creative careers just make sure that if you think it's an original idea it's a it's a real concept that you actually you know you have implemented it by self you've put in your efforts into making it so make sure you copyright it that's something which is very integral so then this is a mahalakshmi swarup then again a tanjore to be so this was the challenge what i'm talking about from transforming to extreme indian folk art to make it a little modernistic to fit in the modern day houses was my challenge like i say every career has different different kind of challenges this was my basic you know uh what do you call it? the difficulty to kind of how do i survive in this modern era of art then um, this is one pichwai so the pichwais became modern day pichwais though they are the oldest traditional art forms but like i said when the world changes when when it modernizes so people get over new ideas and concepts for them it is very old school so that's what it was called then so these are modern day pichwais and of these phone calls i got an appointment from him met him for the first time and uh, after that uh, i did a small work for him and in the course they were also doing their own residence so then these five years passed by of his house got done and i did some art works for him and he's also become a mentor to me and he's been guiding me through a lot of my ups and downs became more like a friend so i we discussed in you know, a healthy talk i asked that uh, will i ever do a show of my own my solo show as an artist where i'll be showcasing all my works and a celebrity would come you know maybe sachin i was working with then that the audacity to ask him because you know it was like thinking that he'll just say no so will that day ever come in life that uh, will he come and inaugurate my show for that sake then it was uh, uh, like 2013 my first show happened there was no celebrity there was no pr nothing didn't know anything about how to go about it but like i say what you prophesize what you testify on your life it all comes true so this is a lesson for everyone try being optimistic about things in life and just speak optimism all your life that's what really really matters to everyone so that is one reason i say i'm an extreme optimist for that reason so i don't testify any 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 negativity on my life or on my surroundings so that is one thing you all should follow it will rather make your life better then this was like i say innovation so i had to improvise myself of doing a genre of art which is um, you know which is appreciated and i be accepted in the world market as an artist that point of time since 2008 i tried innovating a lot of lot of ideas and concepts of my own like i said a pichwai became a uh, you know a modern day pichwai or a tanjore became a refined tanjore so the, i all the refinement i did was just on the art front that's it so this was one of my first awards it was the first 3d siddhi vinayak painting so uh, a 4d siddhi vinayak painting and it was carved in wood and gold and silver and some uh, semi precious and precious stone embellishments and it got recognized it gave me also a lot of recognition as an artist so and obviously a great feeling when you get your first award uh in 2017 i get this call from the pmo that the pm sir wants to meet you as an uh, uh, as an artist so this portrait was done for him at that point of time and uh, unexpectedly i was called to the pmo next week and uh, the meeting got lined up and i was invited by the pmo we had a 15 minute long interaction then 2008 uh, was invited by london british parliament and these are all i'm why i'm sharing these things with you all is that life is very unpredictable all you have to do is just you know focus on what you're doing and i realized late in my life as i say i'm an accidental artist but in 2008 i kind of realized that it was destined in a manner that this will happen and it just happened then the british parliament i got a bharat gaurav award and so on the life has just been a journey and then the pandemic came so in the pandemic it was a very heavy time for everyone initial days were a couple of days for good rest and later everyone like what to do someone side cooking someone you know side they were pursuing their own passions one thing two things i did one is that uh, i used to be a avid traveler at work i used to travel a lot 
And uh, so I got a lot of time to spend with my family. My son turned seven, and I just didn't realize that he's seven, and I was not there with him in all the course because I was busy working. And as an artist also, I had a complaint that I didn't get the time to paint. And there was this time I used to paint eight hours a day. And later, it just tend to turn to just an hour a day maybe, or not even that. So at that point of time, I definitely spent a lot of good time with my family. At the second time, at the second phase, I would say that I gave a lot of time practicing my own art again. Instead of doing it for people, I started doing it for myself again. It, it f felt like childhood again that, you know, since I was a child, I was, you know, I used to, I used to do out of passion. One thing which strongly happened gave me a lot of happiness. And a lot of, you know, unintended peace, like, you know, I never thought that I'll get that kind of, kind of time, quality time with family and of my own at Artworks. So this is something which uh, I wanted to implement as a collection a lot of years. So all the photographs you see are clicked by me of my travel across the globe. And I have a very strong love for animals for that sake. This collection is called Perish and Precious. It's called Perishious. Perish and Precious. So then I gave this particular collection a meaning. And uh, as uh, you must have heard about NFTs, uh, all of you must have heard about what NFTs are, non-fungible tokens. So I was reading about it, just came across this in the first lockdown. And I was like, uh, digital arts also do have a value. And plus, more than a value, they had a very big exposure worldwide. So I actually started making them you know, as, as art pieces to begin with, you know, putting them as compositions like any other artist does. And uh, while the lockdown finished, I was ready with a collection of my own. And now it's become a rage and it's a global travel collection. And uh, it has a lot of meaning to it because all these uh, species, what you see, are on the verge of extinction. May it be a lion or a polar bear or a penguin or a giraffe or a kangaroo for that sake. Or, uh, so this is something, was a, something close to my heart. Implemented that started my own NFT collection, launched it, and uh, the one of the lucky few actually who survived in the NFT market because there's a lot of forge also which happens, especially with NFTs. So yeah, the, this is how it has been. And uh, copywriting I told you about. And all of you youngsters out here, what really matters is that your mental peace is very, very important. At the first go, keep your mental peace. And like I said, become an optimist prophesize, you know, positivity in your life. Don't speak negative about your life. Because whatever we speak comes to life. At the same time, what really matters is that life would always have its own plans for your future. So just take one thing at a go and don't stress about things. And the most important what I realized in the lockdown again is that I started, you know, retrospecting myself, my own self, every, every week. That what is the good I have done? What is, what is the bad I have done in a meeting or in my life or in my family or as a parent or as a child? So that has helped me a lot. Self introspection, what you call it. So that has helped me a lot to, you know, make me as a better person, as a better human. And uh, being, being light over here in the mind, so this comes for everyone. So just do that and uh, do great in your respective careers. God bless you all. Thank you.